Hi, my name is Jeff Kyle with Rotor and Schwartz, and today we're talking about two products. One is the uh, Rotor and Schwartz RTO6 oscilloscope, and the other one is this cool little device the folks from Arduino sent me, which is the Nicola Sense ME. Now, the Nicola Sense ME is an industrialized version of Arduino, and it has a ton of cool sensors, which we're going to look at in just a minute. Now, um, I wanted to use this in sort of a home environment to uh, um, monitor a, a number of different things in the household. And I got to thinking, how much power does this thing consume? Um, I might want to connect it over Bluetooth Low Energy, which is built in, or I might want to hook it up to display. And how much would that consume? So we're going to try a couple different experiments, connecting up to Bluetooth Low Energy as well as a display, and we'll see how much power uh, this dev device consumes. And so a um, couple of things uh, that we're doing here is hooked up to the RTO6, we have a very high sensitive uh, RT-ZVC current probe. It actually measures current and voltage. Now, traditionally, you might be used to seeing a, a current probe like this that clamps onto the circuit and makes the measurement. Um, with these sort of probes, it's real important to do a degauss and also to do a, a zero offset. Um, but the measurement accuracy sort of degrades over time, so you have to continually degauss. The nice thing about the RTZVC is it, it is not prone to those effects because it's using a built-in shunt resistor to make very accurate measurements uh, down into the nano amp sort of range. And so we hooked up to the circuit um, through that. Um, the Arduino is being powered off of the lithium ion battery here and we're just going to measure the, the current. Now prior to um, hooking up this circuit I programmed the device to do nothing really. It's just reading the sensors. It's not hooked up to Bluetooth low energy or a display. And I wanted to get sort of a baseline of how much current is being drawn in that configuration. So I saved the waveform here and we can see that um, the, the current usage is about 5.4 milliamp uh, current usage. And we also see this sort of sawtooth, which is indicative of the, the, the voltage regulator in the uh, Nikola Sense ME. At this voltage level, uh, it's, it's sort of oscillating at about 93 kilohertz. And so um, pretty interesting. So we've got our baseline, about 5.4 milliamps. Um, and then what I did is I programmed up the Nikola Sense ME with a, the, the same sort of routine that's monitoring all the sensors, but it's also using the Bluetooth Low Energy to transmit that to my laptop. And so over here on the laptop, we can see a number of different things. Now, the first thing you see is uh, this rotational display where it gives me a graphical representation of the orientation of the board. So you can see as I rotate this board, the, um, the image on the laptop sort of mirrors that orientation. So um, there's sensor data in the device that very accurately allows me to know the position of the board. Uh, it also has an accelerometer. So if we look over here at the other part of the display, we can see as the board gets uh, vibrated or shook around or uh, accelerated in various axis, um, I can see that as well. It also has a gyroscope built in. So I know positionally how to, um, you know, what's going on with the board. And then we've got a variety of other environmental things like temperature, humidity, indoor air quality. It's got uh, gas sensors, uh, pressure sensor, uh, a lot of cool data there. And so um, using Bluetooth Low Energy, we're transmitting that information from the board uh, to the laptop. And so in this mode, let's take a look at how much power is being consumed. So I'm gonna minimize the, uh, the prior capture here and then uh, we'll take a look at the current off of the current board. Um, so running this here, you can see it jumps around a little bit, um, and that's indicative of some low frequency sort of uh, variations. Um, we'll go ahead and dial out the time scale here, and what I'd like to do is just go way out to maybe capture a, a full second on screen. And um, what you can kind of see already is we're getting a lot of detail about the activity and how that current varies versus time. Okay, and so we can see that variation over time. We're capturing from minus 500 milliseconds up to 500 milliseconds, so we're getting a full second of capture. And what we'd like to do is do the same measurement. So rather than, um, let's close that measurement, let's hit the measure button, and we'll show you how to make a, a mean current measurement. So. Uh, we're going to do this on that current source. We're going to add a measurement to do uh, mean, and we don't need frequency right now. We just want the mean current. Let's turn that on. 
And there we can see the, uh, the mean of about 14.54 milliamps. So we've got an increase of about uh, 9 milliamps. And uh, that's an average uh, reading across the entire screen for that full one second. Um, now, another measurement that you might want to do is you might want to actually measure the accumulated sort of um, uh, current usage over time. And so a common way to do that is to integrate the current over a bounded period of time. So let's turn that on. We're going to turn on the math function here on screen. And we've got some sort of standard operators uh, like add, subtract, and a variety of different things here. But for the integral, we're going to go to the advanced equation editor. We're going to tap in there. Uh, we're going to clear that. And we're going to do the integral of that, that current channel that we're using off of the ZVC. We'll hit Enter. And I'm going to just uh, adjust the scale here a little bit and bring this on screen. And now we can see that purple trace overlaid is accumulating the amount of current um, that is being used over time. So this allows me to park the waveforms anywhere that I want relative to each other on screen. And gives me a display where I've got current up above and power consumption down below. Next, I'll use the uh, cursors to track the waveform. And this allows me to uh, use the cursors to bound or gate the region of that uh, purple trace that I want to integrate over. And so I'll set that up. And now I'll position the first cursor to the beginning of the trace. I'll park the second cursor at the end of the trace. And then down below here, I can see that the, uh, the, the total uh, distance between those two cursors is about 14.54 uh, milliamp second. Um, you might be used to seeing battery packs being rated in milliamp per hour. Uh, this is a, a direct sort of uh, factor, except this is in seconds instead of hours, so you could do the conversion, and do some estimations to figure out how long a battery pack is going to be able to power your device. Next, we want to take, um, you know, we've got the case here where we're doing Bluetooth low energy. I'd like to swap in a uh, display to see how much the display uses relative to the Bluetooth low energy. So next with the setup, what I've done is I've taken the uh, Nicolasense ME that we had before, but I've wired in through the I2C uh, a new display. Now, I did this earlier with a couple different displays. So I did the uh, TFT display here. And uh, when I measured the TFT display and the current consumption, uh, the current level, the mean average uh, current was about um, 62 milliamps, um, which is quite a bit higher than the 13 milliamps that we saw with the Bluetooth low energy. Um, but I also swapped in um, and configured this uh, OLED display, this organic LED display, which are really low power. And uh, we're going to take a look at what we're measuring with that display. I think we'll find that it's quite a bit lower than the TFT display that I tried. And so uh, we've wired in there um, the display to that over I2C. And let's take a quick measurement here. And you can see the current profile there captured up above. And we've got our same integral set up from earlier and the cursors. And all we really need to do is look at either the mean here, the 13.63 milliamps, and then we can see integrating that over a second, um, the consumption is 13.36 milliamps second. And so really about the same current consumption as the Bluetooth low energy. So this is a good display. Uh, the, the TFT display that I uh, used is nice in its color. It's multicolor, so it's a beautiful display, but it's going to use a lot more current than um, this uh, OLED. So we've given you a, a couple different techniques and uh, tools that you can use with the RT-06 to evaluate uh, current usage and power consumption in uh, IoT devices. And we've also uh, talked a bit about the Nikola Sense ME, which has amazing sensor uh, capability and really low current uh, consumption, power consumption. And so uh, together, uh, these tools can be used to evaluate an IoT system to pick appropriate devices, displays, U2s, utilize uh, Bluetooth low energy. Uh, so hopefully this is helpful in creating your designs. Uh, for more information on the RTO6, you can go to rota-swartz.com. 
And for more information on the Arduino, you can go to arduino.cc. Thank you.